absolutely fantastic. Then you don't have to worry about whether or not <laughs> you're making the wrong choice or that the choice may not work out. I have a little quiz for you. Each of you should have had or should have gotten a paper. And I'm going to give you a quiz. It's going to be yes or no, true or false, Y or N, T or F. If you haven't had one, then um, get one from me. And if you don't have a pen, you could borrow my pen, provided that you're going to give it back. Uh, anybody who doesn't have a paper? Anyone? Okay, you didn't get one. You could just pull one off there. Okay, everybody, yes, if you just pull one off, if you just pass it back. You need a pen? And um, here we go. Yep, I think there are two people behind. If we just, you're on a pen open, yeah. okay, that's the last one I have. Yes. <laughs> okay, just pull a paper, a, a, a sheet off, one for you and one for your wife. All right, <clears throat> I'm just going to test your relationship IQ. <laughs> Um, I like giving quizzes. Oh, there's some, I have another pen for anyone. So, Y if you agree, yes, and N if you disagree, no. That's, that's very simple. Are you all ready? Yeah. Okay, good. You look very intelligent, said people. <laughs> so you should get 100%. <laughs> okay, God does have a specific, God, does God have a specific person for you, that I left out the word person. Does God have a specific person for you? Yes, if you agree, and if you disagree. God has a specific person for you. Yeah? Not one person, specific person. Ready for number two? Number two. If God gives you someone, you will have a successful marriage. If God gives you someone, you will have a successful marriage. No, no, no. Whether, do you agree or will you disagree? That's all I need you to do. Do you agree with the statement? Yes, if you agree. And no, if you disagree. Next question, next statement. All you have to do to get a spouse is to wait for God to send him or her to you. All you have to do to get someone, just wait for God to send him or her to you. Nothing else. <laughs> yes, if you agree, and no, if you disagree. Love is a decision. Do you agree with this? Love is a decision. Do you agree or you disagree? <laughs> I need you to write your answer on the sheet. Love is a decision. Ready for number four? Number five, sorry. Would you marry someone who has all the qualities of a good spouse, but you don't have any chemistry for them? Would you marry someone who has all the qualities of a good spouse, but you, don't, you just don't feel it? You don't have the chemistry. And I think I only have six questions in this quiz. Is it okay for a Christian woman in this day and age to approach a man for a date? <laughs> no, no, just if you agree, if you agree, is it okay for a Christian woman to make the approach? If you agree, yes. If you disagree, no. Okay. Okay. I think I only, I think I have only, yeah. Okay. There we go. Should we go to the answers first and then come back to the presentation? Or do the presentation and then... Huh? <laughs> Almost everywhere I go, people want the answers first. Okay. Okay, let's go with the first one. 
Does God have a specific person for you? Yes. All the hands of those people who say yes. Take your hands down. Those who say no. Okay. <laughs> Those who are unsure. <laughs> okay, my brothers and sisters, you want the answer? Yes. Mm. Why did you say yes? Mm. You're a bit of a philosopher. Okay? Why did you say, uh, uh, okay. Olga? All the young people Ola. said no. Ola, Ola. Ola. Sorry, Ola. That's right, that's right. Well, one thing I believe that God has someone for us, but then it's our choice whether we go for that person or not. But God has, a, God has things planned for us, but then we have the choice whether to do or not to do. But God has a specific person. So God has a specific person, but you make the choice. Yeah. Yes. Did you say specific? I mean, I was under the belief that God wants someone for us who loves him. But when you say something specific, I kind of... Yeah. yeah, but do you agree or you disagree? That's all I want. You, you, you disagree. Why specific? On the... the, the specific that, word. That, that word, specific. Maybe you misunderstand. Maybe you misunderstand. No, it, it, the, the question is meant as it is. You know, it may be kind of ambiguous, but that's the, how the question is meant. Let me answer that. Yes. Yes. I don't think so. That means it is. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Because if someone dies, that means you're consigned to singleness for the, Single rest, for the, rest, of the rest of your life. Rest of your life. We, we don't yeah, see that it. when Abraham died. He, he, had got he got married again. again. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we'll take you. Um, okay, let's not take too much time. We'll take um, the elder, and then we'll come to you, Sister T, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make some commentaries on that. Yes. Married using the Bible. One one guy married people of God like David, where they marry mm. one, two, three, four, you know what I mean? So many wives. <laughs> <laughs> and then they are not we're not, not subscribing to polygamy. I know, yeah. I know, but I'm yes. saying why it's confusing because we're so some marriages are arranged. Yeah. Family arranged and the books. We will come back to that. Now, let me just say something, Brother Thomas. Uh, we're going to have to move on in, in terms of in interest of time. We'll move on. Are you, do, do you have something to say, Brother T? I believe that God only wants to see us. And I'm happy. Now. Yes. And the main thing, He can see from the front to the back. Mm -hmm. He knows if the man or the woman is going to die. And He can do with that. <laughs> I have a quick question then, in, 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 in just to clarify uh, the point that I'm going to bring up. Let me see the hands of those who are parents here. Who have parents. Who are parents. Okay, take your hand down. Do you have a specific person that you would want for your son or your daughter? Absolutely. Yeah? Is, is your daughter here? Just, just, no. <laughs> I wonder if they would like to hear you say that. I know, I know. So, so you've already picked the person for... No, I haven't picked anybody, but there are certain qualities. Okay, hold on. I'm talking about the person. No, no, no. no. The person. No, no, no. Not the person. No, no person. My mom does. Your mom has someone for you. <laughs> I know she has. Yeah, okay. I don't know who she is. I said no. <laughs> okay, let me just say here that God has built human beings with choice yes. and has created us with the ability and the capacity to use our knowledge, our understanding and discernment to make choices. Yeah. And he wants us to make wise choices. He will not come down from heaven and if you want a car, tell you the red car. 
or the kind when he knows that you have preferences. However, he wants the best for you as you as parents want their best for their children. And he will lead and guide and direct and help you to navigate to the individual or in, and, and you could have one of several individuals. And that's another topic that I should have put it up here. Can you love more than one person at a time? But the answer really that God doesn't have a specific soulmate for you is that he doesn't. What he has and what he wants is to guide us to make the correct choice. There was only one person in all of the Bible that God ever came down, actually more than one, but very rare, and said, and actually orchestrated the relationship, and that's Adam. The only other person that God directed to marry someone was Hosea. And that was to show Israel, it was almost a demonstration, a physical demonstration of what Israel was doing. That's the only other person. Most other relationships, marriages, were choice. So the answer to that is no, but God wants to work with you to make the correct choice. Next question. If God gives you someone, you will have a successful marriage. All the people who say yes, stand up. Is that a yes? A stand up. I want you to stand up. Stand up. Yes. Stand up. If you say yes, if God gives you your spouse, you will have a successful marriage. Why did you say yes? Because uh, in a home, God should be the center in your relationship. It, even though there are so many uh, trials that may come. No, but if God gives you your spouse, yes. does that guarantee you a successful marriage? For me, yes. I don't know. Is that your husband? <laughs> Is that our <laughs> I, I don't know, Brother T. Your, your wife is not standing, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear you. Why, why do you say? You can sit now. You can sit. Because if God does it, it can't go wrong. Oh, if God, if God does it, it cannot go wrong. Whether to you wanted to say something. I believe it's a wise thing to accept. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that really is no. No. Yes. The reason for that, that human beings have choices. A good example, a good example of this is that God himself chose the king for Israel. He chose the kings for Israel, the first two kings. God himself chose the king. And yet things went all right. In other words, you cannot sit on your laurels simply because God directed you to someone or brought someone into your life. You have to put energy, you have to put work, you have to make the right choices and someone, even though they were correct at the point in time when he or she is chosen, don't necessarily mean that they would be correct for the rest of their lives. For example, David. David himself was a godly man. He was a man after God's own heart. But yet, after being king, David did some unscrupulous things that even the pagans themselves wouldn't have done. Then we have our good friend Solomon. Remember him? He was tooted to be the wisest man in all the world. But yet, he was led astray mm. by a woman. Uh, in number three? Oh, hold on. If God gives you someone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I'm using the term, no, no, hold on, I know that you, you're all little brain is here, but in terms of the way I'm using them, I'm using them as synonyms. If he gives and directs you to someone, if he gives someone to you, there's no guarantee, even though he feels that the two of you are suitable, both of you will have to work together. Yes? Both of you will have to work together. It's a journey. 
Um, and because of choice. Yeah. You know, the, 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 one of the most dangerous things to give someone or to even give in to, to beings is that the element of choice. Mm. That's why we're in the sinful world today. God created perfect beings, but yet he risked giving them choice and they made wrong choices. So if you use that analogy where they were perfect, Adam was perfect. You can't be more perfect than Adam, I could tell you that. Dollar against a dog biscuit. Eve was perfect. <laughs> I don't know where the supermarket was. But <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. All you have to do is to wait for God to send someone into your life. Okay, let me see the hands of those who say yes. No. You're saying yes? Those who say, who think not. Okay. Right, you can't put your hand up for both. How are you putting your hand up for both? One. I think that's a yes. Because when Satan did his thing against God, God never knew it. Saul did it. Saul agreed to do it. Saul put that with God. Saul put it before God. Well, he made a choice. He made a choice. Um, but we're talking about getting a spouse or a partner in your life. And we're saying that, um, that you, you just sit down and wait and twiddle your thumbs or just wait for God to send somebody in your life. Is that? Is that? No. No? no. Do, you, do you think you need to do something? Yes. Do you need to avail yourself? Do you need, well, we pray also. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Should I tell you a story? A story about this woman. Oh, let, let me, let me, when, when we get into that, I like, <laughs> I'm preempting myself. So, there are two camps, two ideas, two thoughts around this issue. And I said here, yeah, they come down to two categories of people. There are those who belong to the camp that I call wait and see the romantic salvation of God. <laughs> but that's one side. Maybe the people in this side. <laughs> and then there are those who are the ASK sect, which is ask, seek, and knock, and see. Now, to be honest, there are times when God allow people to come into your life for a reason, for a season, for a lifetime. But God likes to work with you. I have this concept and I read a strand of it from Ellen White. And I tend to say when divine help is coupled with human efforts, miracles occur. Amen. And God is the type of person who likes to work experientially with you. Many of you are scholars, you're studying or have studied, but God didn't just make you pass the exam. You had to study. There are those of you who had to look for jobs, and sometimes you can be headhunted, but many times you have to look for the job and apply. Not very often employers come knocking at your door. <laughs> Somebody knows this. But as you do it, God works with you and leads you. He opens doors, shuts doors, until ultimately he leads you into a situation and a job that is best for you. What do you say about that? Amen. Similarly, some of you may start out and it just doesn't work out. It didn't work out. And then, your heart is broken, as they say. In Guyana, they say, you cut my liver up, peace, peace, and leave me to die. You feel it. But years later, you recognize, I wonder what I saw in that person. Mm -hmm. And somebody else great has come into your life. So he works with you. Love is a decision. Love is a decision? Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Liam, do you agree? <laughs> no? 
What is love? You are in love, so you can tell us. What is love? You're thinking about that, put it on the spot. I'll come back to you, Leo. Yes. Is that what? It's, it's character. It's character? Yeah. It's, In what way? Like it's not a sentiment, it's not a decision. Like you just have a trait. Mm. Like Help me to understand a bit. As in, um, love is not a feeling, it's not something that you decide to have, it's something that you live your life with. Love. Yeah, it's not a decision, it's a character trait. That's the way I see love. The character trait of God is love. God oh, okay. Alright, so hold on. I don't see it as a decision. But if you. I'm uh, going to go out with someone. I'll get together with someone. What is that? Well, you're getting to know someone, but you don't love them. You don't you're, love them? At the beginning, no, you can't love someone at the beginning. I wouldn't, like, the only time you start loving someone is when you get actually married with them. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm not dying for no one. And love is denial of self. That means you're already dying for the Hold on, so at the point in time that you decide to marry, or you, you're going to marry, yeah. is that a decision? Yeah, but it's, love is not a decision, I can't have it. Is that a character trait? Yeah, that's the way I see it. Oh, right. I'm a little bit lost when you talk about character trait. Yeah. Um, as a, as in, in terms of, it's a state. As in, the, the way I see it is like, everything you do... But you do know we're talking about romantic love between a man and a woman. Oh, uh, I'm not the best person to talk because I don't know what Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. I know that love is a principle. Yeah, yeah. Is that, it's, yes. But well, I'm talking about love between the genders. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. okay. Right, love is a decision. <laughs> what do you say to that? All those who say yes. <laughs> oh, okay, take your hands down. All those who say no. Okay. What do you know about love? <laughs> well, okay, let's hear you. Love is a force of nature. Oh, I've never, never had that one. Love is a force of nature. So that force can take you away at any time. Oh, love is a force of nature. I've never had that one. I must write that one down. Yes. The force of nature. Yes. Yes. Um, why did you say no? Yes. For me, I think it's a process. Love is a process. The moment you see when people say they love or they love, they say they can be test of that. When you are talking in terms for me, loving the man is a process. And I would like to go back to what you were saying to this morning, in terms of all those things that marriage brings, developing perseverance, endurance, forgiveness, all those things. So it is for me, it's a process. It's a process. It's not a decision. Not it proceeds. When you say, oh, we are not, we are not going to you can't decide that first. But why, but why did you decide that? You decide that because you are carrying it. Yes. With what? <laughs> <laughs> With what? Infatuation. <laughs> <laughs> you carry the word of love? Yes? <laughs> let's, let's get Jean. <laughs> it may be a process, but at some point you've got to make a decision. Yes. It may be a process, because the process isn't with any and everybody. It's one specific person, usually. So, can we agree or disagree? <laughs> Love is a decision. What did you say? What, what, what did you put your mind? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, I said yes. You said yes. It's a wise fellow. <laughs> yes. Oh, how about you, young lady? These two young ladies here. Let me pick on you. What did you say? <laughs> It is or isn't? It is. It is? It is? It is? Who, who said that it isn't? It is a decision because God made a decision to send the son. Oh, so you're saying it is a decision. It is a decision. Okay. Yes. Love is ultimately a decision. I want to say something here. Can I briefly just expand and expound, expound on it? Um, in the West, in the West, we are primarily carried away with the aspect of feelings. Um, and we must have what they call the X factor, the it, the chemistry. And perhaps maybe we should answer the next question before I really go into the expanding and expounding of it.
So he's a force of nature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A what? Attraction. Oh, attraction is not the decision. So if you meet someone who physically you like or you know, chemistry, you have a lot in common, you know, you can laugh. That's not a decision. You know, you will have an awkward attraction. I think to choose to love someone, like to love someone, I think it's a choice because past that attraction, which you're saying is the process stage, you then decide whether this person is worth going further and you either continue with the hope of, you know, I subscribe to what you I concur. I concur. <laughs> You're quite right. Let's just, let's just answer the next question and then we get into a full blown discussion, discussion with it. Would you marry someone who has all the qualities of a good spouse but you don't have chemistry for them? No. Ah, I hear that. The young people know. You're proper Westerners. <laughs> Your proper Western. Let us see the hands of those who say no. Okay, take your hands down. Yes, anybody? Yes, there's one. One. Yes. One sole yes. person, yes. take your hands up. Why do you. Oh, yeah, there's another one here. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you took a long time to get your hand up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Why did you say no? The quantity. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm going to text Sister Thomas and then I'm going to actually give you some pointers here. Sister Thomas. Okay. Listen, people. Can we listen? Sometimes a person has good qualities. And at the time, you're telling yourself, I can't marry this person. But later on, the, you could the find... The force of nature. Yeah, you might deal with this person and find, oh, you know, I didn't realize, you know, and this person is really nice. That's what I mean. Yeah. See, yeah. At, but at the moment, just looking at the person, and you could think, I, I wouldn't marry that person. I want, to, I want to tell you something. I want everybody's attention. Oh, yeah. Because this is heavy. Yeah. Do you know that most of the scriptural marriages have very little chemistry. Yes. In fact, if the Bible is anything to go by, the element of chemistry was not necessarily the thing that the decision to marry was based on. I'm coming to you. I want you to get your Bibles and turn with me and I'll tell you what the Bible says. The, right. Here. Let me just find it. Here. I want you to turn to Proverbs. And it will tell you what. Proverbs chapter 24, I think. 23. Some Proverbs. 22. 24. What chapter did I say? And I'm going to read verse 3 and 4. Are you with me? Yes. By wisdom, a house is built. By what? Wisdom. And through understanding, it is established. Through what? Understanding. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. That's how we establish a home. Through what qualities? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. A home or a house is built. It seemed to me that throughout scripture a lot of marriages were actually based you, we call it arranged marriages to them. Um, on certain principles. In fact, it seemed as though the people who decided to go on feelings ran into a whole ton of trouble. Yes. There was a fellow called Sansa. Remember the guy? Oh, this guy was a gifted person. In fact, he was born with a specific mission to deliver Israel. He was given extraordinary powers, physical and or mental. The guy was almost genius. He could make people, he, he, he created a riddle that nobody could unravel. And he was powerful, he had a mission. But he went to a place, and note this point, young people. He went to a place, in fact, he went to two places. Last one was Timna. You know where Timna was? Timna was a town or village in the Philistine territory. Now, this guy is an Israelite, and no ordinary Israelite. Guess what he was? He was a judge in Israel. In other words, he had one of the highest offices. He was tall, I don't know about that, but muscular. Man, when that fellow flexed his muscles, he was ripped. They say in the young thing, he was ripped. And I want to believe that there were beautiful women in Israel. I want to believe that there were girls and young people, young women there, who had their eye on Samson, but he chose to go down where? To Timna. Actually, he did it twice. He went to Timna. Can't remember the other place he went. Yes. And both of his marriages 
turn out to be disaster. Well, in fact, it seems, and I'm going to tell you this, <laughs> that women have such powerful influences on men that you have to be very careful, young men. And I want to say here to young women, you have more power, not only young women, the women in general, you have more power than you could begin to dream that you have in terms of influence. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, there's a university in the Netherlands, and this guy who was an academic, <laughs> this, is, this is really interesting, he was an academic, and one day, he was going someplace, and when he was crossing a bridge or uh, walking along, looking for this place that he wanted, his destination, he passed a beautiful girl, and he thought that he wanted, you know, just to talk to this girl, he wanted to impress this girl. So he turned back and tried and started to engage the young woman in conversation. And in the process of engaging her in conversation, I think it came to the point where the girl asked him where he lived, you know. And for a brief moment, he actually couldn't remember where he lived. He, he literally couldn't remember. And that thing, when he went home that evening, no, he couldn't. Now you're talking about a person who's an academic, remember? Academics are intellectual people and they're supposed to be able to bring things back to memory at the drop of a hat. So the next day he told his colleagues and they all laughed. And they decided that they were going to research. So they carried out a research experiment where they got a group of university students, some beautiful girls, some handsome young men, and they conducted uh, an experiment where they got some young men and young women and they gave them a test. Okay? And then they, they, the people who came in, they, they graded the test. The assistants that came in, they, they were ripped handsome young men for the girls and very beautiful women for the boys and then they tested them again. And they found out that for the girls, the score differences wasn't, was negligible. But for the young men who were exposed to the beautiful women, their score Black dropped. In fact, the women affected the way they think, they thought. Which brings us back to the story that it seemed to me that the impact that Delilah had on Samson yes. was so powerful, the chemistry, we talk about this chemistry. Do you know today that we learn that when you are in love, your brain reacts as exactly as if you are on drugs. Oh yes. <laughs> you get a high. Honestly, <laughs> chemistry is a deadly thing. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which brings me to a point I think Leah mentioned. Was it Leah or you? I think it was this young lady. Somebody mentioned that chemistry actually don't, don't last. It doesn't last. It wears off. In fact, I want to tell you this. Are you ready for this? They found that the romantic phase of any relationship don't last more than 18 to 36, 18 to 36 months. After that, you come back <laughs> and you still have to make a decision. Even if you are married, you have to know your eyes, they said, Love is blind, but marry, when marriage open it up, <laughs> open up your eyes. It tells that when your eyes become open, you sometimes have what they call um, marital remorse. 
You know what marital remorse is? It's similar, it's similar to when you go to the shop and see a beautiful dress or shoe or something wonderful and you buy it and you go home and the next day you open your closet and you wonder what possessed you to buy this? Yes. Oh. Even then, my brothers and sisters, yeah. you still need to decide that you've made a commitment mm -hmm. and you are going to stay with this person. Trust me, you're going to go through it. <laughs> I'm not scaring you off. <laughs> I'm not scaring you off. But I want you to be aware of the process. And hence, somebody said that love can actually grow. I, I said in the West, there are, there are cultures today that literally arrange the marriages for their children. I'm not talking about forced marriages, because that's different, we don't subscribe to that. I'm talking about arranged marriages. The people still have a choice. The parents actually look for eligible spouses for their children. And, you know, match them up and ask them. And they could say yay or nay. They're not forced. Research has shown that when you line up um, a romantic marriage, people who got married for love, and you line up an arranged marriage, actually, the arranged marriage, oh, um, in the, over a period of five to 10 years, actually, is better. And in fact, the romance that you have in the romantic marriage kicks in after a period of time in the romantic marriage. In the arranged marriage. I want to tell you something, my sister. Do you know, today, we know enough information to make you fall in love? Scientifically. Do you know, my dear sister, there are men who are so schooled that they can see you and know the triggers that would make you tick. Yes. Tick. Yes. Have you ever heard of PUAs? Pick up artists. Mm -hmm. There are men who are literal pick up artists. They see you on the street and they approach you and they know exactly what to say, how to say it, how to engage you, how to, you know, just make you feel nice. So, to end this part, I just want to say that, yes, we are not suggesting that you get involved with people who are outside your cup of tea. You know, if you like nice, curvy people, and that's a deal breaker for you, we are not suggesting that you get involved with someone who isn't that, who doesn't have that shape, if you like slender people, that's okay. However, we want to move you beyond the Western formula, which is A, B, C. Attraction, bonding, and commitment. And after that, compatibility. That's the Western pattern, template, that most of us go through. We say compatibility, Assessment, bond, decide, and attraction. You can indeed decide on the qualities and love or chemistry can come. I'm going to get let you go, but I'll tell you a story. I like to tell stories. <laughs> you notice that? Um, some years ago, a young man in university with his student, with his, his colleagues, um, was sitting around and they were, I don't know if they were playing dominoes or some game, they were just talking. And he said to him, he said to his friends, you know, five years from now, 
On the 5th of October, I'm going to be married. I'm going to get married on the 5th of October, five years. They all laugh when you say, trust me, I'm going to get married. That day. They looked at him, <laughs> but he made it. He actually saw, he made it up. I don't know why he thought of doing that, but he did it. So they graduated, they went their separate ways, they got into their careers. And um, time, as usual, flew by. And in July, on the fifth year, one morning, he woke up out of his sleep with this knowledge that he had made a promise that he was going to get married that year, in October. At that time, he didn't have a girlfriend. And he wasn't on any of this on the scene. What is he going to do? And he did something almost <laughs> phenomenal. He said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to come to this too. He, he said something that you should take note of. He's called up his friends, his current friends, and he said, look, you guys have to help me with this. And they said, okay, no problem. There were about maybe five, six of them. And they said, okay, we're going to find a wife for you. Yeah? This is what they did. They put an ad in the paper for a wife. You know like you would put an ad for a job? Yes. They put an ad in the paper. Literally, they did this. They put an ad in the paper for a wife for this man. And the quality is so important. How many people do you, do you think responded? More than a lot. A lot? About a thousand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're not desperate. <laughs> anyway, they decided to interview all of them and they whittled it down. They went through the interview process and they, until it came down uh, literally to five. And this was now early September. Got it down to five. So. They decide they will, they will interview them, the panel will interview all of these, and then they will make a choice by a democratic process, um, by voting. For. So the women came, they interviewed them, and um, three out of the five chose one particular lady, the other two. So by democratic process, they chose that lady. And he actually didn't meet the lady until the day of the wedding. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> and they did actually get married. They got married. Question Do you think the marriage lasted? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Actually, it lasted. And he loved her very much. They loved each other. Yeah. i tell you why. Okay. tell you why. why. You know why? Yeah. His friends Knows. knew him. Yes. Yeah. What he wants. His friends also knew the qualities yeah. that would best match him. Yeah. And his friends were looking for specific things that would complement him. Yes. And those were the things that they checked for. Qualities. Here is the point. There is one of the points that I want to make today, my brothers, my sisters, that those of you who are looking to get married or want to get married, get help. Mm. Not only friends, friends and family. I'll tell you a story in the Bible too mm. of a lady called Esther. Mm -hmm. Esther had a mentor. One of the things you need to do is to hang out with people who have done what you've done before. And that mentor actually guided Esther through a process that helped. Which brings us to number six. Yes, you're gone. My wife. Yeah. Okay. What? How I met her, or how did I decide to marry her? You said you made a decision. Yes. Did you, did you, did you, you know, natural course of the way I did? 
<laughs> the, the force of nature. The force of nature, or you made a conscious decision? I made a conscious decision, but I also was attracted to her. Okay. Yeah? And you guys are happy, so chemistry works now. <laughs> Well, we, we do have uh, peaks and troughs. That's everyone. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we do have peaks and troughs. Um, but to ask, I'd like to answer your question by giving you a testimony of myself and my wife. My wife isn't here, but um, when I met my wife, I wasn't too sure. She was beautiful, yes. The reason why I wasn't too sure, she was uh, a bit younger than I. 16 years younger. What? 16 years younger. Yes. <laughs> you see what I'm telling you now? What? I really did an error right now. Oh, okay. Well, yes, so. Um, however, let me tell you the, why I made the decision. What? Um, we were going out, and I was, I was due to go to America for um, a conference. I had to go to America for a conference. And that time, I had just finished parting my living room into half to make it into a, a one bedroom so I could let it out to get some extra money. When, when I was about to go, somebody had applied to come to see the, the, the place. And I was traveling the very early uh, next day, the two days, when the person was supposed to come. So I gave her the keys and I said to her, you know, can she just arrange this for me, just, you know, deal with it. And I left. And I went, went to the conference and came back. And when I came back, I found that she had gone to the, the flat, cleaned the flat, scrubbed out the bathroom, arranged everything, um, dealt with the person in a very professional way. He was impressed and he took the, the, the tenancy. Not only that, he went to, she went to my allotment and watered, it was summer, and watered the plants for me. And when I found all of that out, I couldn't let this girl go. No, 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 no. What? You got to be joking. It would have been a mistake of my life. Yes. So this is the one. Yes. That is how I decided yes. that she was. You know, obviously I was praying and I, you know, all of it all of the Christian things that you need to do, but that's how I made the decision that I was going to marry her. She's 16 years old, younger Yeah, but I wasn't, she wasn't 10 and I wasn't 26. <laughs> if, that, if, that is, if that's what you were puzzling about, no. Okay, I, I, now that we've clarified that, can you move on? <laughs> and the Bible does say, the Bible does say, that he, she must be the wife of your youth. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. Is it okay for a Christian woman to approach a man? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so, yes, the Bible, I just told you the story of Ruth. Yeah? Ruth actually proposed to Boaz, the way. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go, there is a feminine way to do it, and there is a masculine way to do it. So, you know, you can't throw yourself around seeming desperate, dragging your integrity in the dust. There's this girl I, I, I worked for, and she said she asked the guy to marry him. Marry her, sorry. Said, Why would you do that? And he said, no. Uh, but guess what? They're living together. They're not Christians, really. But they're living together. They got kind of got it backwards. So, um, those are the six questions. Yeah? It's okay, I suggest, I suggest if you want to know the feminine way of interacting with um, a person to, you know, engage their attention, I suggest that if you're going to ask someone out, you ask them out in a general way if you're a woman. So for example, you will ask them out to not a one-on-one -on -one date, but a general, oh, we're having something at church on Saturday night, or oh, we're going to play tennis, you know, come along, it's going to be fun. So you invite them to something that you're are going to be doing anyway, whether or not they come. Yes? Well, obviously, you're inviting my man to the church event. Function. And, and if you see someone else and he says, you know what, I like this person, and you're like, 
the force of nature. <laughs> that, that's a risk that you run. Yes. That's a risk that you run. Yeah? So <laughs> you have to be willing, you have to be willing to allow things to also organically sort itself out. You don't want to force yourself on someone. And, and, and in many instances, there are sometimes when the person that you have in mind that you are thinking of going down the aisles with, it doesn't work out. You end up with someone totally different in, in, in terms of the process. And the, it, it worked all out, it, you know, the choice. And by the way, you can get married to one of several people and still be happy. Yeah? You can get married to one of several people and still be happy. Okay. Now, um, it's 25, nearly 25 past. And I haven't started my presentation. I'll tell you what I'll do though. Maybe another time because the presentation is full on. Um, there is, you know, if you are interested, I actually have um, a series, a course online on how to... Uh, yes, probably, if you invite me back. Um, uh, I want to see you again. I have questions. Let's just, I'll put it out to general questions. We'll take about four questions. Anyone who has any question on any matter related to anything that we've said or even outside, if you want to just uh, put your hand up, I'll take your question. Yes, brother. Um, I'm listening. Um, your girlfriend, that's the one that you marry. My wife. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It must have taken. I understand that both getting your property and renting. But to what have you gotten? That's what forces me. Mm -hmm. Why? What should you domesticate in that way? How do you want to be to it? So very intimate. Why? He asked me. I want to find out if he was educated. I'm domesticated. Or both. I think both. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other question? Yes. Qualities of a good spouse. I, I'm, I'm not asking. How do you tell if this is the one or the other? Yeah. Um, you know, what if someone, if someone has all the good qualities of a spouse? Okay, so what, what are the good qualities? Is that the question? Uh, there, yes and no. There's some, um, let me just explain, explain quickly. When, the reason why we marry and form families is because we want to have certain needs met. Human beings are driven by needs. There's something called um, emotional needs. And the reason why we gravitate towards one person and not another is because that person seems to be capable of meeting many of those needs in us. Right? I want to tell you another thing that is a um, mantra, and I'm just going to cover this. I, I could answer this specifically, but the person, uh, th this, this quote that I normally give is a person that you marry, a person stays with you not because of how beautiful you are, although that is nice, how rich you are, although that is good, not because of any of those, but because of how you make that person feel when they are with you for most of the time. Yes. If you treat that person well, if you make them feel esteemed, if you empower them, if while they are with you, you do things to uplift them so that they are better off with you in their life, then that person is more than likely to stay with you. However, if you degrade, downgrade, denigrate, 
the pain that you cause them will cause them to entertain ideas of distancing themselves from you and even ultimately divorcing you. There are many people, even in the church, who are undergoing conflicting situations where they are in chronic pain, when I say chronic pain, emotional pain, to the point, maybe some of you are, maybe you know someone who is going through such a, a thing, that they begin to entertain ideas of, mm -hmm. which brings us around to a crucial thing, that you need to know your spouse's love languages. You may or may not have heard of love languages. You need also to know their emotional needs. You need to be aware of what we call their love busters. What did I say? Love busters. Things that bust up love. And let me tell you, we know today, we know scientifically there are certain love busters that if we see in any relationship, we know that relationship is in trouble and it is headed for divorce. If in a relationship you have, I'll give you, shall I give you just four of them? Yeah. yeah? If in a relationship you have things like criticism, stonewalling, do you know what stonewalling is? No. Mm -hmm. It is common in men, not so much in women, but some women display that. A stonewall is, I am talking to you, but I shut you out. It's an invisible wall. Yes. You're sitting there, you might as well be talking to the wall. Resentment. Yeah? Resentment and all of sort of things. Yes. So we, if you have um, if you if you begin to think of your per, your your spouse as being less than or stupid, derogatory, mm. then your marriage is headed in a defensiveness. These are fundamental things. If they're in your marriage, or in a relationship, your relationship is in trouble. However, if you have where um, the person is looking out for you, with the comp if they compliment you, the, these needs, there are three categories of needs. There is general emotional needs, there are gender specific needs, and there are cultural emotional needs. I don't have enough time to go into that. However, if you meet these needs, I could say to you that, look, your relationship will last. And many of these needs are identified in the Bible. And again, if you want to go through um, 1 Corinthians 13, there are some needs, there are some, there's a criteria there. If you go through those, those are qualities that you want in a spouse. If he, he or she has that, yeah. I could tell you walk down the aisle with them. Mm. I hope that helps. Mm. Yes? Any, any other question or comments? Commentaries? Don't be shy. I'm not going to bite you. No, just thinking. There are yes. some people who say um, we have that love at first sight thing. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it do work. Does it? Does it? Does, are you asking if it exists? Yeah. Does it really, really? Is there such a thing as love at first sight? Attraction. Is it attraction? Attraction, yeah. We love the It happens. Yes. It has happened. It However, this is what I say. It is not, gather this, it is not how you start a relationship, whether it's from day one, moment one, second one, or year one, year five, or year ten. It's not how the relationship starts. It is how the relationship is maintained that is crucial. Yes. And that is why the Bible isn't really heavy on how you find a spouse. You don't have dating techniques. You don't have, you know, this is the way that you should go. The, the, the Ten Commandments of quoting. No, you don't have that in the Bible. However, the Bible is saturated with principles of how to relate. Do you understand that? Yeah. How to relate. Yes. Yeah, um, that's really interesting, but I've got a bit of a problem. If I look to a man to supply my needs, 
I'm going to be terribly disappointed. You mentioned 1 Corinthians 13, bears all things, hopes all things. There is no human being that can fulfill 1 Corinthians 13 in and of themselves. Um, and the moment, because a uh, man is a human being, that man's going to flop. And if I look to that man to supply that need, I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be disappointed. But where we have, you spoke about being married this morning, and the marriage, and you said that was a, a, an allegory, a synonym of Christ being married to his church. church yeah. Where is it Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all my needs. Your needs. Mm. Now, if I have God supply all my needs, I don't need to come to a man or anybody else for my needs. That's bonus. And I can afford, if that man flops or, is or lets me down, God won't. And my need in him is supplied. I can be generous. I can overlook. I can pray. Because I have not made man a God supplying my needs. And you could have a gap in love. There are a couple of things. That I, I conquer with you with the main things that you were saying. But I would like to say, if you give me permission, is that we've got to be careful that, you know, there are times when I go around and people say, oh, I'm married to Jesus. <laughs> you know? Yes. Okay? Yes. Uh, and that has its place. That has its place. Um, however, there are certain needs Jesus don't come down and supply. Okay? When God made man, and, and we have to be frank and, and awful. When God made Adam, Adam was perfect. Adam had a perfect relationship with God. But yet God said, it is not good for man to be alone. In other words, there are certain things that we need to supply for each other that God himself will not supply. I, I don't know if you understand. Um, so there is, a, there is a place for God. There is a place for God. In fact, you know, a good example I like to quote when I'm talking about this. The Bible says that uh, Jesus said that I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I mean, you know, he makes that. He makes that you need to eat. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word. However, we're not going to use that and say that I'm not eating from today. I'm just going to read the Bible. Because there are physical things that we need to supply the body. And God made love. And when I'm talking about love, yes, agape love, but there is also human love. And God created that love. And he expects us to supply that with a husband. I tell you, no matter how holy you are, and you're married to a man or a woman, you're going to want conjugal relationship. Let's keep this clinical. Yes, yes. And um, God is not going to come down and supply that. He expects him or her, as Paul would say, that your body is not your own. So we need to kind of segment these out. And I guess one point, a very important point that you've made, you shouldn't depend on your husband or wife to supply all of your needs. Because no human being can do that. But I would say though, before you chime in, that they should supply your major emotional needs. Yes. The reality is that most people, children and teenagers, the majority of people are not married. So does that mean then what's happening to them? Yes, for them, for children, their emotional needs are supplied by their parents. Yeah? And, and that is why when we have dysfunctional relationship and their emotional needs are not met, they become dysfunctional adults. So, um, majority, a lot of women and some men in the church, what about their needs? Is it that God, what happens to those, those needs? Okay, there are certain specific needs that obviously they would not have met because they're celibate and we preach celibacy. Um, there are other needs, general needs that they would they would they would find fulfillment in their own family and extended family and church family because we are we are creatures. But um, in terms of, of general needs, it's it could be supplied for friends and families and church. Um, however, when it comes to very specific needs, 
Um, the Bible teaches that you must bring your body under subjection and um, flee youthful lust and all the rest of that. So he expects us, if we are not married, not to become involved in certain things. And you get the point I'm making. Yes. 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 Any other question? Yes. It's more like when I listen to your story, you know, it reminds me of Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. Resourceful and, you know, thinking ahead. Because these are things that, young ladies, these are things that, make, that really um, applies to the man. You know what I mean? Uh, when you think of the, 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 the things in, in, in Proverbs, so the lady, you know, look around, see the place needed to um, clean up. She did that. She look outside. She walk, those are the things that men look for, women. Yes. Yeah. Resourcefulness, virtuousness. <laughs> and, and women also look for certain things in men too. Yes. Yes. So let's get a little bit of a balance here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I just want to tell you there are a couple of courses that I've, that I've designed that I've put them online. How to find a Christian spouse. Obviously the one that I was supposed to present today that I didn't get a chance to. How to be found by the man. Holy and horny. How to control your sexual desires as a, sec as a single Christian. Um, Christian dating myth that, you sh that may be keeping you single. How to avoid marrying a jerk or a jerkette. Um, why are you still single and what to do about it? Where to find a Christian spouse? And how to get your boyfriend to propose to you if you are not. Um, it's <laughs> okay. Right. That's my number and my details if any one of you want to get in contact with me. And I think we have to shut the church down because um, time is up. It has been a delight, a wonderful time. I trust that God has helped you to gain some insight in some way, shape or form. And I pray that as you go on your journey, whether through uh, marriage or and on your single journey, that God will be the center of it. God bless you. Amen. Amen.